So this is the second part of placebo effect. In part one, we learn about the what, how, and why. And in this part, we'll go a bit deeper into the surgical implications. So what I'm going to talk about is two types of surgical operations. Uh, the first one would be vertebroplasty. The second one would be sham knee surgeries. And then my own encounter and how I benefited from it. Okay, so let's get started. First, let's talk about vertebroplasty. What's vertebroplasty? Vertebra means backbone and plasty means to mold or to shape. So basically, vertebroplasty is an outpatient procedure where bone cement, which is basically the same material as plexiglass, uh, this bone cement is injected through a small hole in the skin via a biopsy needle. So in simple words, if there is some fracture in your vertebra, they inject bone cement in that fractured area after some time, the bone cement solidifies. Ideally, it should then relieve the pain. To check the effectiveness of vertebroplasty, four community hospitals in the Netherlands underwent a randomized, double-blind, sham-controlled clinical trial from 2011 to 2015. In total, 180 participants, all aged 50 or older, requiring treatment for acute vertebral fractures were randomized to either vertebroplasty or a sham procedure. 91 of them got vertebroplasty and 89 got the sham procedure. Now, all patients received local anesthesia. The vertebroplasty group also received polymethyl methacrylate injection, the same material plexiglass is made from. So the vertebroplasty group also received the bone cement injection, while in the sham group, the injection was simulated using verbal and physical cues. Now, both groups had statistically and clinically significant reduction in pain at all follow-up points from one day to 12 months post-treatment. There were no significant differences between the groups. The result, vertebroplasty is no better than sham treatments or the placebo. What is even more <laughs> interesting is that two adverse events, two negative side effects occurred in the vertebroplasty group. One respiratory insufficiency and one vasovagal reaction. So basically the placebo group members were better off than the real vertebroplasty group simply because there were no adverse effects to deal with in the placebo or the sham procedure. Quite interesting. Now Let's talk about knee surgery versus sham surgery. The knee surgery that we are talking about here is specifically called partial meniscectomy. A meniscus is a C-shaped piece of tough rubbery cartilage that acts as a shock absorber between your shin bone and thigh bone. It can be torn if you suddenly twist your knee while bearing weight on it. Ouch! A torn meniscus is one of the most common knee injuries. So partial meniscectomy is one of the most common orthopedic procedures. To check the effectiveness of partial meniscectomy, a randomized, double-blind, sham-controlled trial in 146 patients between 35 to 65 years of age was conducted at five orthopedic clinics in Finland during the period from December 2007 through January 2013. 70 underwent real surgery and 76 underwent sham surgery. Both the real surgery group and sham surgery group reported similar pain reduction levels in their knees. So, in conclusion, partial meniscectomy provides no significant benefit than sham treatments in patients with a degenerative meniscal tear. A similar trial was done by Dr. Bruce Mosley at Methodist Hospital, Houston, USA, where he divided volunteer patients suffering with knee arthritis into three groups. Two groups would undergo real knee surgery, and the third group would receive sham surgery. The result? Again, all three groups reported similar levels of pain reduction. What's even more interesting to me is that when the people were told that they had undergone sham surgeries in their knees and spines, the pain didn't recur. To me, that's extraordinary.
Placebo treatments are also showing very promising results in certain migraine headaches, Parkinson's disease, ADHD, and even asthma. What surprises me the most is that the same inactive ingredient, the sugar pill, if you will, can help faster if it's given in a different form. For example, the same sugar pill, if given in the form of a tablet, a capsule, and an injection to three people suffering from the same pain of the same intensity, will relieve the pain fastest in the person who receives the injection and slowest in the person who downs it in the form of a mere tablet. The tablet, the capsule, and the injection have the same sugar in them. If you change the shape, the effect is faster or slower accordingly. Also, a blue-colored placebo pill will heal a headache faster than the same pill in, let's say, white color or red color. A red color placebo pill will make you perform better in sports than, say, a blue colored placebo pill. It makes no logical sense, but that's the way it is. 90% of all new drug candidates fail to show any statistical advantage or a placebo. So, in the healthcare industry, placebos are treated as if they are something unwanted, something bad. But I think if regulated well, placebos can be used for good outcomes. They can save billions of dollars in healthcare spending. Uh, they can reduce the adverse effects in the patients caused by the overuse of certain drugs, such as antibiotics. And they can lead to a more stress-free, healthier society. And now, let me share with you my personal experience that I promised you in part one. So, I love walking. In fact, it's not very unusual for me to walk about 15 kilometers a day in a single go. So, I love walking. And on an average, yes, last year's average was about 10 kilometers per day. So, I'm a heavy walker. What happened about two and a half years ago is suddenly I started feeling extreme pain in my left knee. The pain wouldn't go. I tried putting the balm, medicine. I tried using the knee pads, things like that. The pain wouldn't go. One week after the pain started, it became so extreme that I wasn't able to sleep at night. So I decided to go to the doctor. The orthopedic doctor examined my knee, he ordered an x-ray, and later he ordered a scan, and he could find nothing. So he suggested me to take a few painkillers and just take rest as much as I could, and he asked me to stop walking these long distances. And so I was just lying in the bed, browsing YouTube, and I stumbled upon this video on uh, Dr. Mosley. After I finished watching this video, I don't know why, but I started laughing. Eventually, I also cross-checked things with NEJM and uh, BMJ, and within two days, my pain completely vanished. I think it was the placebo effect. I trusted BBC, I trusted NEJM and BMJ, and so something happened in my brain, I don't know what, but eventually I got rid of the pain. Two and a half years after, I'm still doing about between 10 to 15 kilometers a day. So that was the personal story I wanted to tell you. Thank you for watching, and if you really like it, please don't forget to subscribe. And of course, please share with your friends if you found it useful. Please leave a like, and I'll see you in the next one. Until then, bye-bye.